My exams are pretty much a cumulative of the whole semester. So the best way to study for my exams is to restudy the old tests that you've taken, um, read through your notes that you've gone over in class and your PowerPoint presentations. I'm amazed at the number of students that don't read the textbook. Um, I think that students should read the textbook before the professor actually lectures on the subject matter to find it more helpful. But uh, those would be my tips. I think the best way to study is to study first on your own and see how far you can get with the material and then get with a group. And um, you can either quiz each other or uh, just talk about the material. I think the common mistake, I would say lack of communication. Uh, and that's because if, if you are having difficulty or the student is having difficulty understanding something but has not communicated that or has not taken the time to really come to my office hours and say, you know, I'm struggling with this, then it's almost like we're limited on how we can help and be able to better prepare them in understanding the material. And I think that sometimes we just take it for granted that you know, we are here and our, our doors are always open. I know in my class the most common mistake is I actually will tell students what to prepare for and what to study for the final and they actually don't study it or they study other material. And I've heard them come back and say, you know, I thought this would be on the test and I was like, I told you it was going to be on the test. Well, when I first started teaching here at Cal State Fullerton, I did find that the students were studying the wrong thing and that's why I do a study guide. So. If you're taking my class, the biggest mistake you can make is not studying the study guide. Uh, there is a great advantage in sitting with a group because I think that just being able to bounce ideas off of each other uh, and getting the different perspective in terms of uh, studying preparation and material. A lot of times when we don't understand something or we see it in a particular viewpoint by hearing someone else's viewpoint, it, it enlightens us in a way that we didn't even realize that it could and so it gives us a better understanding of things. So I think that as long as the group stays on, on, the, on the topic and on track, then it can be very beneficial. Studying with a group or studying by yourself? I went to college with my wife, so I was forced to study with a group. <laughs> um, I don't, you know, I, I think it, it, there's a benefit to staying with the group if the people in the group, quote unquote, are as smart as you, if not smarter. But if you find yourself in a group where you're doing all the tutoring, I guess that would help you. So I've, I've done both. I don't think there's an advantage over one over the other. I really like students to work in groups because on your own, when you're tackling cases, you may not even think about all the different elements. So you lose out. But if you study in groups, you will have one people talking from different perspectives and second people bringing up things which you may not have thought about. So it really helps to bounce off your ideas, debate slash argue with them and that enhances your understanding dramatically. So the more challenging the course, I would say the better it is, uh, more beneficial it is to work in groups.